He didn't start out a superstar, but Leslie Jung certainly became one. He got class, you know, he got a, a sort of, sort of, I think he's, he got some blue blood. Uh, he know how to dress. For three decades, starting in the 1970s, Jung left his mark on the Hong Kong entertainment scene. Acting on TV programs, starring in movies, recording hit records, selling out live concerts. He is basically in a film, then he goes to the 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 film. Along the way, Gogor, or elder brother as he was known, created an enormous fan base throughout the Chinese world. I think that there's a, an indefinable charisma that uh, one performer can have in a generation. Leslie Cheung definitely was that one charismatic figure. But behind the charisma lurked a secret depression. I didn't necessarily say that he had a Overnight, one of Hong Kong's biggest stars had stopped shining, but in the hearts of his fans, he lives forever. April 1st, 2003, the news shocked Hong Kong. Leslie Jung Guok Wing commits suicide, jumping from the 24th floor of the Mandarin Hotel in the city's central business district. I remember oh, where I was when I heard that Leslie Jung had passed away. We were uh, shooting a movie at the time, and this amazing news. And I, I called up uh, Yi Kin Chang to see if it was true, and he said it must be because he would make such an awful joke about Gok Gok. Fans, friends, colleagues, the entire entertainment industry is stunned. How could someone so universally popular, with such enormous success in both music and films, take his own life? Peace. Rich enough, you know, he's very rich, handsome enough, good life. He know how to enjoy life. The path that led Leslie Jung to his tragic end began in Hong Kong in the 1950s. Jung Guok Wing was born on September 12, 1956, the youngest of 10 children. Yes, his father is a very famous tailor, uh, Chong. Was, uh, his sister married a uh, British. But despite his comfortable life, there was unhappiness in the background. His parents divorced when he was quite young, and later he was sent to boarding school in England. The environment of the English countryside was very different to the crowded streets of Hong Kong. And young Frankie Bobby. This Around this time, he also decided to change his English name. Frankie Bobby became Leslie, after the movie star Leslie Howard. It was a glamorous choice, if a bit androgynous. Unhappy at school, Leslie regularly made a hundred mile trip to spend weekends with relatives at the seaside, where they had a restaurant. During this time, he also found a new passion. He began singing in front of audiences at the restaurant. 
By all accounts, his performances were quite well received. His musical development was starting to take shape. While in the UK, he was also exposed to Western music, which would later feature in his career. He was planning to attend university to study textile management, but his father fell ill and he returned to Hong Kong. His studies interrupted. In 1977, Leslie entered the Asian Amateur Song Contest, describing himself as a fashion model, but unfortunately, he didn't win a prize. He sing very good, dance a little bit. He sing the song called uh, American Pie. So, uh, we're, we're always looking for young and talented people at that time. So, um, he's in, and he performed very well. Producer Michael Lai was head of the Asian Music Contest that year, and young Leslie's performance caught his eye. We think it's good, so we, we signed him up in RTV, and then he also can act. So we put him in some um, a drama series, and also he sings the theme song. In the Hong Kong entertainment world of the 70s and 80s, multitasking was a requirement, and the young Leslie seemed to excel in everything. His early roles in television drama series introduced him to audiences in Hong Kong and the rest of Asia. But meanwhile, his recording career was slow to take off. His first two albums were not huge hits, and at one performance, he was actually booed. He come up with one record, it's not that popular. His voice is not that. His voice very sharp at that time. But then he began collaborating with producer Michael Lai again the man who originally spotted him at the talent competition. Collaboration, yes, must be with the producer. Because producer is, is just like a director, you know. We choose all the song, let him listen, and then we have a meeting, and then we record about 14 or 15 songs for one record. I lower his key, just like Elvis Presley. We try one song called Are You Lonesome Tonight? We write it into Cantonese, and then he sings the song like Elvis with a lot of nose, the sound come out with more bass. So, it's all right. Lai would go on to produce 10 more records with Leslie, but the first record they worked on came out in 1983, The Wind Blows On. It was a huge success, and that success kick-started his musical career, as did his new manager, Chan Shuk Fan. He is a very confident artist. 就算那時可能時間不是很得意 unique talent was also shaped by his experiences in the UK which made him unusual for a Hong Kong performer he comes into the industry educated in England. He's a, at that time a huge fan of Western singers and Western music. And yet he comes into uh, what was on the cusp of going from a Mandarin language industry to a Cantonese language industry, the music industry. And he brings to that uh, some of the, I think, the, the feeling of uh, an international star, even though he's singing in a Cantonese language. Leslie's career was beginning just as the biggest movement in Hong Kong's music scene was developing, canto pop. For many, it was the beginning of a golden age of entertainment. 80年代香港南文化的黃金歲月,南音樂,電影都是最頂峰的時期,有好多歌手,好多導演,劇本,他捧啱一個咁頂盛的盛世,盛世而起。And that meant more than just becoming popular in Hong Kong. It meant audiences all over Asia, and in particular, in Chinese communities overseas. Hong Kong is the pop culture is developed to all over the world, like Chinatown in London, like Chinatown in San Francisco, whatever. So the Hong Kong popular singer and the Hong Kong popular actor will be also popular everywhere with Chinese crowd. But even with Leslie's growing popularity, there was unhappiness hiding in the background. Unhappiness and more. Leslie Jung, born in Hong Kong in the 50s to a wealthy but troubled family. Sent overseas to boarding school in the UK, he later returned to Hong Kong without completing his studies. 
back in the British colony, he entered a local singing competition. And while he didn't win the contest, he did earn a TV acting contract and a record deal. At first, success eluded him. But in 1984, he released his first top 10 hit song, Monica. And after that, there was no looking back. Monica, how many years? Monica, at that time, made his album sell for about 40 million copies. That's very good. His native talent and good looks were big factors in his success, but it also took a lot of work. He got class, you know, he got it. He got some blue blood. Uh, he know how to dress. At that time, it's not like nowadays, you know, you just sing a song and then you got popular. You have to be good, very good, and then you can record a, a record or you record a theme song. At the same time his music career was taking off, the world of Hong Kong cinema was also taking notice. Look at Leslie Jung. You know, there is a guy who looked like a matinee idol. He looked like a movie star should look. And that's not to be discounted. So, I mean, he had that about him. He had the movie star, in his young days, he was a, a great, a gorgeous looking man, and he had movie star appeal. Director Clifton Coe was the screenwriter for 1982's Teenage Dreamers, Leslie's first leading role in a movie. In the early 80s, most of Leslie's opportunity in the film industry were for movies aimed at teenagers. But by 1986, Leslie was cast in director John Woo's classic film, A Better Tomorrow. For the producers, he was the only choice. Again, Leslie's unique qualities made the difference. Audiences, directors, and critics responded to that charisma, even when his roles called for quite different characters. And in addition to his natural talent and charisma, industry insiders also appreciated his work ethic. 我想哥哥就有一個七八十年代演化下來的一種特質 Despite all the glamour that goes along with superstardom, day-to-day -day life in Hong Kong's entertainment industry was distinctly unglamorous. During that era, Hong Kong had the world's third biggest film industry, after Bollywood and Hollywood. As many as 200 new movies were released each year, and Hong Kong studios could churn out a new film, from start to finish, in just three months. 
，我呢叫拉閘放狗。咩叫拉閘放狗啊？入廠婆唔拉閘，拍啦！誒日頭外景，晚黑廠景；日頭外景，晚黑廠景，直至到冧廠。咩叫冧廠呢？個演員休克啊！個演員你唔放佢返去幾個鐘，佢根本已經冧咗、暈咗啦，叫佢冧廠，咁先會停廠或者停 c 唔出外景，然後個先可以俾你返去瞓幾粒鐘。It was under these sweat shop-like circumstances that Leslie was given the nickname Gogor by his fellow actors. Gogor is a brother, you know, that means big brother, you know, but more intimate nickname Gogor. Everybody loves it because he's quite talented, you know. He's not that big nose, not that proud, you know. So when he works, he works with the, he coordinate with all the cameraman or lighting man or something, whatever. He's not that big, you know, but. At that time, because he had passed so many years, so he knows the hard work, the hardship. Because maybe he is a TV person, he is really a TV person. If he is involved in anything, he is a TV person. He does not put himself in the forefront. He puts everyone together to eat, to drink, to eat. He is really a TV person. He is a TV person. 有啲唔係㗎，有啲係有啲巨星洗死人㗎，即係我未見過喺佢身上係有咁樣嘅情況。佢真係大家一齊食飯盒，佢一齊食飯盒。大家踎喺路邊，佢係踎喺路邊，即係佢佢唔係當自己係 super star 咁高高在上。But it wasn't just within the industry. Leslie's nickname Gogo caught on with audiences too. There are people who you revere when you go to worship in a theater in the cinema, whereas there are people who you feel that you know um, as you know a neighbor, you know. And I think Leslie had that. He felt like people of Hong Kong felt that he was uh, an elder brother of the extended show business family, and by extension, the family of Hong Kong. And if Hong Kong was his family, his family loved him. He was nominated for several Chinese film awards and gained critical recognition throughout the rest of the region. Meanwhile, the canto pop music style that Leslie pioneered with Monica back in 1984 was dominating the music charts, and so was Gogo. -Go. Throughout the latter half of the 1980s, Leslie released two to three albums a year, and it seemed like whenever he wasn't in a recording studio or on a film set, he was on a concert tour. He got so many experiences, you know, he got hundreds of concerts, you know. We went to Korea for a concert, we went to China, we went to Guangzhou or whatever. We've been to a lot of places, you know, Malaysia and then uh, around, around the world too. The experience gained by all this travel began to show in Leslie's performances, and his style began to adapt under many different international influences. He picked up so many things, and then he solved it, and then he performed with another way. So some of the audience, they don't, they don't know English song, you know, they just listen to Kenda Pop, and then they will say, wow, what? What is it? Wow, it's so, so surprising, you know. But there were more surprises to come. In 1989, after finishing a world tour and at the peak of his success, Leslie announced he was retiring from the music business. In 1989, at the age of 33, he decided to go out with one last set of concerts, 33 of them in fact, one after another, at the Hong Kong Coliseum. At first there was widespread skepticism that Leslie would actually go through with his plans to quit the music scene. But then in 1990, he left Hong Kong and emigrated to Canada, seemingly for good. At the peak of his music career in 1990, Canto pop superstar Leslie Jung announced his retirement and emigrated from Hong Kong to Canada. He had won more than a dozen music industry awards since his first hit single, Monica, broke in 1984. His 33 night farewell concert series, one show for each year of his life, packed in sellout crowds. And when it was over, he left for Vancouver. And although he took Canadian citizenship in 1992, industry insiders didn't believe Leslie would be gone for good. Canada is doing nothing, you know, nobody knows him. I told him before, I said, you will come back for sure, <laughs> 100%. Because when you are an artist in show business, you always love show business. You know, you like to perform. 
In fact, Leslie did come back, but to make movies, not to record music. In the early 90s, while he was officially living in Canada, he also made several more films, including Wong Kar Wai's Days of Being Wild, which won him his first Best Actor prize at the Hong Kong Film Awards. The role was not at all the sort of typical Leslie Jung romantic lead. And while Leslie drew on his troubled past to find the characters he played, he also went deeper into his roles than many actors. Um, in 1992, Leslie devoted himself to a role that would change his image even more in the critically acclaimed international box office hit Farewell My Concubine. Directed by China's Chen Kai Ge, this was the first Chinese film to win a Palme d'Or at the Cannes Film Festival. Leslie had been approached by another director years earlier for one of the lead characters, Cheng Die Yi, a Peking opera performer who plays female roles. But at the time, he turned it down. The character's sexual ambiguity was just too much. But when the opportunity came up again, a decade later, he worked hard to get the part. At around the same time, he appeared in a number of films playing openly gay characters, and rumors about Leslie's own off-screen sex life began to spread in the tabloids. 他們可能第一步想不是說一定要攻擊這個藝人,而是覺得這個新聞或者這張相有賣點,我可以增加銷路,加一些caption做一些煽動性的說話,就可以大賣。Homosexuality was only decriminalized in Hong Kong in 1991, after years of legislative toing and froing, and society at large still struggled to accept gay lifestyles. 發生在90年代,都是做了。都是前衞了是他這個announcement是出得早一點 But regardless of the tabloid rumors, his film career continued to flourish in defiance of typecasting. In Hong Kong, he was the nearest a gay man could get to being out. And everybody knew, it was an open secret in the industry most of society that he was gay. And yet, he could play straight roles effortlessly. He sometimes played maybe sexually ambiguous characters in the films. But normally he was playing very heterosexual action roles, as he does in the films like A Better Tomorrow. In, 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 in most of his romantic comedies, he's obviously playing it very straight. In general, we're just playing the straight romantic lead completely believably. Audiences responded to Leslie on screen quite well, regardless of what role. 13 of his films in the 90s were in the annual top 10 lists for highest grossing box office receipts. And despite his retirement from music, he continued to work as a composer for movies, winning awards and nominations for his theme songs and film compositions. 
that success spurred the tabloids and the paparazzi even more. Hong Kong is a very small place, and despite the fact that, you know, there's only, you would think, a finite number of uh, stories to be told in the naked city, uh, obviously the publishers of all these gossip magazines and newspapers don't believe that. Because even though it's such a small place, such a small industry, every day, these big color sections of gossipy stories, and definitely there were plenty on, on Leslie Jo. Audiences were also sympathetic to Leslie, especially when in 1995 he signed a new recording contract, releasing his first album in five years, a collection of his film songs. Another album of new music followed, and in 1997 he went on tour again. His retirement was over. Leslie was back, and audiences went wild. I think to be a star, to be a superstar of stage and song or screen, there's something in you missing, some part of you that's unfulfilled, and the love of the audience, the attention of the audience, fills that in you. His comeback tour lasted for seven months, 55 concerts, including dates in Japan and China. Success followed success. His next few albums were among his most popular, even as he was changing his sound and style. Having reached a level of success, he then looked at ways in which he could uh, redefine his own character through the parts he played and through the songs he sang. And I think that the, the challenge of uh, any relevant artist is how to continually reinvent yourself while not straying too far from your core audience. Because in the end, it is show business, and no business is no show. And I think Leslie was very smart at doing that. He knew how far to take his persona, that the audience would follow with him. Uh, and he also knew that there's a point he couldn't, he, you couldn't go beyond. And Leslie was pushing that boundary. In the closing number for his 97 world tour, he wore red high heels and danced a tango with a macho male dancer. Some fans were scandalized, others were delighted but everyone paid attention. Leslie Jung made his return to the music scene in 1995 after five years of retirement. The tabloids had been filled with stories questioning his sexuality after a series of movie roles in which he played gay characters. And while he never explicitly came out as gay, in 1997, he tantalized concert audiences by wearing high heels and dancing with a man on stage. With Leslie in Hong Kong, it was like, okay, here's a guy, an incredibly charismatic and talented singer and actor and performer and beloved star. Okay, we kind of know he's gay, but we, it's not flaunted. He never comes out in public and does a big staunch thing for gay rights. It's just known, but because he's so talented, it doesn't matter. And if Leslie was pushing the limits before, in 2000, he pushed even further, launching his biggest and most controversial concert series, entitled Passion. He commissioned top international fashion designer Jean-Paul Gaultier to design his costumes, an ultra-modern look that took things over the top. For the finishing touch, he wore a long wig, completely changing his appearance. He changed his image is because at the last show, he's that popular. He wanted to do Jean-Paul Cordier to be the custom designer, and then whatever, he wanted to be long hair, he wanted to wear heels, you know. Because he's becoming bigger and bigger, you know. Too big. He wanted to do something that people would never do. And at first, Leslie's series of concerts was savaged by Hong Kong critics. 好像Passion的演唱會,香港演的時候,真的鬧得很重要。但在海外的評價很高的時候,甚至麥當娜都非常之激切讚賞的時候,他們又會轉態很欣賞讚,如果將兩個時期的報紙拼在一起,你會看到
yeah, you want to do something new. But I don't like the shows, you know. I don't like it. It should be like, wow, very classy shows, you know. Sing a few good songs, you know. Okay, you can dance a little bit, but a part, one part of a few songs, you can act like this, you know. But the other parts is, the whole show is, is I, don't, I don't like the shows. But others saw passion as an expression of an artist who was very much in touch with Hong Kong and his audience. I think our cultural heritage may not have a very deep roots. We have a lot of Chinese things, a lot of Chinese things, a lot of two of them are combined and strong. But we also have a lot of things that we have never seen in our past. We have a lot of things that we have never seen in our past. Because we have this opportunity. But I think some, there, there are people who, by sheer force of presence in the scene, are undeniable as stars. No perceived flaw in them can stop them. And society as a whole finds them irresistible. And I, he, he was definitely irresistible. But the criticism stung. Gaultier was reportedly so insulted by the initial critical reviews of his costumes that he vowed never to design for another Asian performer. And despite the tour's ultimate success, Leslie himself took the early harsh reviews rather personally. If it's a because of the music, even if we take it as a娱乐 community, you take it as a really good environment of performing. But if it's related to the music, the people who do it are very sensitive. 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 This sensitivity was very much in evidence to those who knew him. I think any person in this area is very top, and a lot of people can accept and accept a reality. You can see a event like a event or an event. He went to the show, the reporters asked him a few questions. 咁佢好 official 答咗啲嘢，啲記者一見到嗰啲炮一打開，有冇人嚟？譬如郭富城咁先算啦嚇，冚一炸，十幾廿個湧咗個郭富城嗰邊。咁你留翻個畫面喺阿張國榮嗰度啦。我因為我見過呢個畫面，我見過。咁你會覺得佢有少少失落，同埋係有少少唔開心。即係呢個係我眼見嘅。One thing is, I really don't know what he's thinking inside. He never talked to people, you know, not, you know, sometimes just, uh, I'm not happy, or why you're not happy, I don't know why I'm not happy. But for the most part, Leslie kept his troubled emotions to himself. In my relationship, I don't feel like he's a very happy person. I think he's a very sensitive person. Maybe because we're a horror film, I always see him very happy in the film. However, Leslie's deeper emotional state seemed unsettled. His film work continued, but friends and family later told reporters of periods of depression and an earlier suicide attempt in 2002. With somebody of that kind of depression, there's a paper-thin line between do or don't, and they're walking that every day. If they're lucky, they're in an environment where the people around them uh, can talk about this kind of thing, can observe this kind of thing, and can create some kind of support group that keeps them on the right side of that line. Tragically, Leslie Jung finally crossed that line. On April 1st, 2003, he went to the gym at the Mandarin Oriental Hotel in Hong Kong's central business district. After his workout, he made a few phone calls, then borrowed some paper to write a note. Then, he jumped from the 24th floor balcony to his death. Because you know, Hong Kong people are always looking for a ladder. A ladder is not going to turn around. You have to jump down. You can jump down, you can call. You can call again, you can call. But the ladder is not going to turn around. At the time, friends, family and associates were shocked by the news. In my home, I know. Uh, people call me, and then uh, Moses is true because two weeks ago I just talked to him on the phone. 
So it's very sudden death. Uh, and um, very sudden, you know. It's a shock. But when he, he passed, nobody want to talk about why or whatever, uh, you know. So nobody want to talk about it. So I refused a lot of interview um, from the press and then I, I don't say a word because uh, I feel very sad. Fans began a vigil outside the hotel. The entertainment world was stunned and the tabloid speculation was rampant. Was he having problems in his love life? Was he worried about getting older? Was he hurt by critical reviews? And it was a moment that changed people's lives. Film star and pop idol Leslie Jeung committed suicide on April 1st, 2003, at the age of 46. He had been to the gym at the top floor of the Mandarin Oriental Hotel and suddenly leapt from the balcony. When the news came out, fans began a vigil outside the hotel. I went down to the Mandarin, you know, the next night when they had the gathering, and it was really touching. Hong Kong people are very... Uh, you know, quite slow to come out and express emotion. They're getting maybe better at it, but they weren't at that time. So it was really quite striking to see the, the depth of feeling for Leslie Jung, and, and I think he did people a tremendous service in allowing them to grieve and allowing them to come to, touch, to terms with their own feelings, perhaps in a way they might not for an immediate family member. And all across Hong Kong, people were shocked. <laughs> 比起发生的意外,不同,意外都是发生的事 Friends and family went into mourning. He's so young, he's about 40 something, you know, at that time. He still can sing. So people got so many rumors. I went to the uh, funeral just to say, where's that? Uh, especially his family, you know, his sister, his uh, friends. Uh, I don't want to talk about it. The funeral had a huge turnout. Family and loved ones, industry colleagues and fans. Leslie's suicide came at a time when Hong Kong was already in the midst of crisis. The city was in the grip of the SARS epidemic. Newspapers were full of worrying stories about possible infections people were wearing masks and the mood was already fragile. As a result, for many, Leslie's suicide took on even greater significance. Fans gather annually on April 1st to mark his death and again in September to celebrate his birthday. Some friends like him, he's very beautiful. But I think 
部分其實係一個，即係佢個心，因為誒佢、呃、比較少有，我見到對誒人好真誠啦，亦都誒冇乜價值。其實佢個個人個魅力最比較吸引。For me, lastly, because I went on very young, I don't have a father figure. For me, lastly, it's like father figure to me. Um, for example, I learned his work, I learned his attitude, I learned everything from him. That's why I've been an actor as well, because of him. And not just from Hong Kong, they come from all over the region, around the world. When I fall in love <laughs> 10 years ago, uh, he arrived. Um, but uh, 2003, uh, he committed suicide after. Um, I go to Hong Kong twice a year, his birthday and Memorial Day. And because through uh, Leslie's, uh, I've met a lot of uh, people from all countries, uh, Korea, China, a lot from China, Taiwan, Malaysia, and to the, in the States and Canada also. The fan groups are quite active and quite dedicated to keeping the memory of Leslie Jung alive. I think you need to find out new things and see new things. It's constantly discovering new things coming out. 其實而家喺 Facebook 個組群或者網上邊係一樣，好多嘅各地歌迷不斷揾翻張國榮寫啲新嘅舊片嘅新嘅片啦，即係以前舊嘅睇唔到，而家揾到出嚟啦，幫佢哋合成一啲新嘅作品啦，唔係惡搞係善搞，將佢嘅作品咧重新剪輯啦，甚至揾到佢喺韓國啊拍嗰啲朱古力廣告啊等等，咁會發現咗佢好多嘅嘢係不斷出嚟，仲係有一種特別嘅意思或者味道喺裏邊，我哋可以傳釋得到嘅。Since his death, Leslie has repeatedly won online polls as one of the most popular actors in Asia and one of the top stars in Chinese cinema. His wax figure in the Hong Kong branch of Madame Tussauds was unveiled on the first anniversary of his death and was placed in the room of historical and national heroes. Director Clifton Coe has written a musical tribute to Leslie and two other actors of his generation, Danny Chan and Paul Chung, all three of whom died young. I still believe that if he is still alive today, he is still an icon of the Hong Kong. He will still have a surprise surprise for us. It is not possible to imagine that Zhang Guoming is still alive. I still believe that he will be a very powerful director. 我仍然會咁睇，可惜係佢離開咗。Coe's play taps into a vein of nostalgia for the Canto Pop era and the golden age of Hong Kong movies. For many, Leslie's suicide marked the end of that time. It was like the passing of an age. You know, you, sadly, we hear about actors passing for various reasons at various times, and singers. But it really felt like the end of an era. I mean, that's a much used phrase, but Leslie, definitely, definitely, that was the case. But in many ways, although he is gone, Leslie Jung is still very much alive. I think we can still listen to the to the records. We can still look at the film. We can memory him for a while, for a long time. I hope. I hope. Uh, so I hope. Uh, I hope people still remember him. I hope. Every cloud has its silver linings. Take two. Every cloud has its silver linings. 咁呢句説話咧，其實嘅意思就係話，每逢喺黑暗之後咧，一定會見到曙光嘅。所以我覺得每一位朋友咧，遇到有咩困難啊，或者唔開心嘅時候咧，都應該用一個輕鬆啲嘅態度去面對。